I'm Phil Bolton with the Global Atlanta News Service, and today I'm with Madhu Sudan, who is the president of Thai Atlanta, and Karen Robinson, a charter member of Thai, as well as a serial entrepreneur. Welcome. Thanks, Phil. Thanks. Thank you, Phil. How do you think Atlanta today differs from the Atlanta that you came to know 20 years ago? I think two things. I think number one, I think there's been more sense of community over the last 15, 20 years. And I think that you're now, whether you're an entrepreneur or whether you're an established um, CEO, I think there's so many groups that are available to support you. And I think number two is that there's uh, a dish, there's gr much greater economic opportunity than there was in the past, whether that be venture funding, whether that be um, uh, loans, et cetera. Ty's always had an entrepreneurial bent, hasn't it, Madhu? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this was a, a great match. This is definitely a great match. Uh, the, uh, as you know, we have a group of charter members. And uh, these charter members are basically entrepreneurs and uh, senior professionals uh, for whom it's time to give back. And uh, so it's, it's, it's a really rich group. And uh, last year especially, we've added on very, very significantly to our pool of charter members. The Atlanta Council of Directors, what is it going to be doing, Karen? Thanks for the question. Uh, we're very excited about it. It's a Thai initiative. That is exactly what Madhu is talking about. It's an opportunity for two groups of entrepreneurs. Number one is a group of corporate executives, uh, retired entrepreneurs, folks that have been successful, that want to give back. And number two, it's a group of privately held, profitable companies that are looking for some um, 30,000 foot um, help. And we're putting together in a formal process that's called the Atlanta Council of Directors. And you're going to be really addressing the need of companies that don't have boards of directors, is that correct? Correct. Um, I've been a serial entrepreneur for a number of companies, and as CEO, I've always had either angel backing or venture backing, so I've always had a, a formal board. But I've been a judge for the last few years of a couple Entrepreneur of the Year organizations, and it was, it was surprising to me how many of these successful companies did not, in fact, have a board. And it, um, in the last few years, there's been a very tough economic times, and many of these companies that were doing very well 10 years ago all of a sudden have hit some rough spots. And it became clear to me that there was an opportunity to match experienced executive talent with these, um, again, successful companies, but clearly could use some help, at a, I'll call it the 30,000 foot level, to help them on strategic issues. Um, Madhu, you've taken the local Thai chapter, the Atlanta chapter, global. Uh, you've been working with the other Thai chapters around the world. Is this a novel concept or have you seen it before? This is uh, pretty unique uh, because what we have seen in the marketplace are typically for-profit initiatives where somebody brings a group of ex-CEOs together and it becomes a business in its own right. Uh, but then that's a business. And uh, for an entrepreneur, it's a bit threatening because uh, you're paying big numbers and then you really don't know what you're going to get out of it. So there's always that sense of distrust, sense of am I buying a service, am I getting good quality? There are all those questions. And uh, Karen's idea of the Atlanta Council of Directors is actually very novel because it removes that whole sense of distrust from the equation. It removes the whole sense of that commerce, the equation of commerce from the uh, equation. And it creates a very nurturing uh, s support system for the entrepreneur. Somebody, for example, uh, he knows that he has this, the, an entrepreneur knows that he or she has this kind of time commitment with them. They know that uh, they, the motive of the advisor is essentially to give back because there's no other reason for them to be there. So it's a pure motive. And therefore, the element of trust is very easy to develop. We see tremendous value in that equation. What sort of companies are you looking for? That's a great question. And we found that this profitable, privately held companies that are probably on the low side, 15, 20, 25 million, that are the high side, as high as 200 to 300 million. But the sweet spot is really those companies that are 
30 million to maybe 100 million. And again, it's amazing how many of those companies that are in Atlanta, number one, and number two, it's amazing how many of those companies do not have boards and are looking for the kind of uh, help and expertise that Mundu has talked about. Uh, what kind of expertise will you be giving specifically? A couple things. Number one, and I think you need to look at it from a strategic perspective, things like how do I pass the company to the next generation? How do I grow the company internationally? How do I, um, what are some creative ways that you can get employees to be bought into, especially if you're a privately held company? Um, those type of questions. And again, you can buy for higher services on those. But so many of these companies we found, these company owners, are uh, they're so busy running their companies that they really haven't had a chance to go out and, and get networked in. And so they're just somewhat distrustful of paid for advice. And what we've, we're very selective when we pick the advisors or directors for these companies. We make it clear to them, this is about giving back. This is not for your personal gain. Your entire focus is to help this company grow and be more successful. Madhu, is this going to be a local, a regional, or a, an international initiative? Well, for us, um, this, since we are doing this for the first time, we want to make sure we make this really successful here, measure its impact. And one of the things Karen is already working on is to look at uh, creating a research base, preferably with, with a university, a local university, so that we can create a body of knowledge around this, and then take it out into other locations. As you know, we have Thai chapters around the world, several of them. In fact, I think 57 of them at last count. So that becomes a great channel for us to replicate this model. And if someone is interested, um, do they call Thai? Do they call you, Karen? How, how do they get in touch? We would encourage anyone who's interested in learning more about the program to approach us in a couple ways. The first one, if you're whether you're a potential board member or whether you're a company that's interested in these kind of services, please uh, approach us through the website. Um, and there's phone numbers as well as email addresses on there. Um, there's also a, a short, very short questionnaire that you can fill in to say that you're interested. Obviously, we have the, the, our launch program that will be the 21st of July, and we'll be, there will be quite a bit of uh, press surrounding that. Um, but on an ongoing basis, we hope to pick anywhere from 10 to 20 companies a year. They sign up for a three-year program, and our goal is that it, uh, we'll be able to measure and track, and we hope to be able to grow the, not only the, the revenues of these companies, but the tax base for Atlanta and for Georgia. And lastly, we hope to be able to increase the number of uh, jobs that are, that are brought on board. The other thing I wanted to bring up very quickly is we think the other great thing about this program is in Atlanta, um, quite often when you have a liquidity event or some sort of an exit, whether you're a corporate executive or an entrepreneur, quite often uh, you either leave the area or become somewhat disengaged. The other thing we're excited about is that we think this will be an opportunity to keep that intellectual capital here in Atlanta, so it's actually helping to build Atlanta and Georgia. Uh, as opposed to spending time just for these folks on their golf game or their tennis game. Um, we think there's a great opportunity to keep these people involved and help them to impact Atlanta and Georgia for the greater good. For people uh, who really don't want to get back into the 9 to 5 grind. Absolutely. But really want to give back uh, on their terms, this can be a wonderful, this is a wonderful opportunity. And all of us at Thai Atlanta are extremely delighted about this initiative because we've had the initiative for high school students called TYE, Thai Young Entrepreneurs. We have the initiatives for the early stage entrepreneurs, which is all the monthly meetings and the annual conference that we have on venture and innovation. Uh, we brought in the entrepreneurs inside the corporation through the innovation theme. And now we are looking at entrepreneurs who have really reached what we call level one success, where they have flourishing companies, but they really don't know what to do next. And sometimes a lot of them settle into lifestyle businesses. And that's really what we are trying to avoid here. right? So if you have potential, don't settle into a lifestyle business. Get the access of this board of advisors. right? And then look at how you can scale the business and uh, make, have a much, more, uh, much larger impact rather than settling to uh, being happy with whatever you've done. So that's really the theme, and uh, we're really excited to launch this program.